Lagos State Government and Police Command top tough on Occupy Lekki Tollgate protest. And Bauchi State Governor Bala Mohammed takes a swipe at Benue State Governor Samuel Autumn over the Hertzman crisis. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cohn. The Lagos State Government and the State Police Command have threatened to deal decisively with any form of protest in the state and they are not ready to arrest and prosecute any, or they are ready to arrest and prosecute any violators. Uh, Nigerians are angry at the decision to restart activities at a symbolic site where unarmed civilians died have called for fresh protests using the hashtag Occupy Lekki Tollgate on social media. There is also worry by counter-protesters that uh, the protest could be used as an excuse to loot properties with the hashtag Defend Lagos also trending on social media platforms. And joining us to have this conversation is security consultant Peter Egbidion and legal practitioner Inibege Ifyong. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Good evening. Great. Thank you. Good evening. All right. Well, I'm going to start with you, Nibaga. Um, what does the Constitution say about protesting? Because, you know, there's been several bans on protesting um, in Lagos since after the NSAS protest. There were attempts to protest, and those were shut down. And this is detail for several other states where, I mean, in River State, uh, Governor Wiki had shut down protests um, protest in, in the state. But then the NSAS protesters still defied that ban and went out to protest against um, the rogue police unit, which is the Special Anti-Robbery Squad. Um, give us a brief background into why protests are legal, if they be. Thank you. The right to protest is a fundamental right guaranteed under the 1999 Constitution, specifically Section 39, that enshrines the right to freedom of expression and Section 40 that encapsulates the right to freedom of association and peaceful assembly. These rights are further reinforced by the African Charter on Human and People's Rights Ratification and Enforcement Act, which is an act of the National Assembly that domesticated the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. We also have the Universal Declaration of Human Rights of 1948. And of course, several other international instruments that recognize civil and rights. Now, in 2015, the National Assembly went further to amend the Electoral Act to ensure and to provide that the role of the police, the role of law enforcement agency during political processions, rallies, and so on, shall be limited to the provision of, of security to the protesters, to protesters shall be limited, I emphasize, to provision of security to persons who engage in rallies, processions, and so on. Now, as long as a gathering is peaceful, the government has no right, the law enforcement agencies have no right to interfere. Indeed, Laws assume for a second that there is cre credible factual basis, that there is credible evidence that violence will ensue in a protest that is being planned, like the one planned for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. The lecturer has required the police to protect those who are protesting. What I am saying is that the police cannot say that they are banning protests. It is even an abuse of language. It is reprehensible 
highly reprehensible for the police to even suggest that they want to ban a protest. But this is not and the first. But this is not the conversation it, that we should be having. By saying this is not the first time police have over and over again banned protests. In fact, I have had um, a, a police PRO on my show before on the radio show saying that if you must protest, you have to come and get a permit from the police force before you even you know attempt to go out for that protest. It's not necessarily that they, I don't know, I mean, I can't speak for the police, but is it that they do not understand what the law says, or this is something that has been happening and it's been allowed to happen, and so the police has a right to wake up and say, we will not allow you to protest, or you cannot protest. Because yeah, as we speak right now, there are so many security vehicles parked at that um, Lekki Toll Plaza, preempting what might happen tomorrow. And I'd like to put it to you again. There are two sets of protests that are going to happen on the same day, could this also be the reason why the police is saying that they might not allow these protests to happen because they do not want it to deteriorate to a point of violence? I do not think so. What I see is that the police over time, for a very long time, have become part of the oppressive class. It, it has become a tool for witch hunting, you know, that is constantly deployed to suppress the rights of innocent citizens. That is why the police will have the effort to come out to say that they want to stop people from protesting. Now, I am aware that the Occupy Lekito get protest preceded the scam that is being called Defend Lagos Project. I do not understand what they mean by defending Lagos. Is Lagos under some form of occupation? Is Lagos being embedded by some foreign mercenaries? Well, well to play, to play devil's advocate, Lagos about? to play devil's advocate for those who, um, for the Defend Lagos, I mean, we were supposed to have one of the representatives on the show right now, but unfortunately he's not here to speak for them. So, but they have said that they are trying to defend Lagos from the looters. Let's not forget that after what happened on October 20, 2020, there was, I mean, an outright crazy looting spree that certain um, people, um, we would, would like to say that these people are not necessarily the young people who were protesting against, um, you know, a rogue police force, but they were um, hoodlums, as the federal government termed them. So maybe this is what they're saying. They're saying they want to guard Lagos and defend Lagos uh, against these people. <laughs> but should that be the job of protesters? If, what, if that is what they are saying, then let, let Sawolo resign as governor. Let the other assembly be dissolved. Let the courts be disbanded. If some private individuals are saying that they have taken over the, the responsibility for law enforcement, that they now want to protect Lagos from hooligans. As a matter of fact, the hoodlums, the so-called hoodlums that I know are agents of the government. I participated in the NSAS protests. So no, you can't, nobody would describe me as a hoodlum. I did not burn any property. I did not vandalize anybody's property. So for these individuals to be sponsored to say they want to stop people from vandalizing, okay. is there any plan to vandalize any public property in Lagos? What evidence shows is that the entire protest was entirely peaceful until the government deployed criminal elements to attack the protesters, thereby giving an opportunity for, for miscreants to unleash mayhem on the streets. Okay, Barry, so just, 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 just hold that thought. Just hold that thought. I, I want to go to the security person that we have on the line, and then we'll bring you back in. Peter Ibidion is a security consultant. Peter, let's look at the security um, aspect of this protest that is planned tomorrow, two protests that might happen simultaneously side by side, one against the other. Obviously one is saying they want to defend Lagos and the others are aggrieved as to the justice that they are yet to get from the panel uh, that was investigating uh, the rogue police force. Uh, what are the security implications of tomorrow's protest, if there be any? Well, this, the implications are that the powers that be, the states have heightened tensions by denying the people or or saying that they would deny the people 
of their fundamental rights to protest, to peaceful assembly, to freedom of expression, and things like that. So it, it is the government and his and his and his um, spokesperson, his agent, that has raised the raised the tension in the in the in the environment, and that has inflamed um, passion. When if if they gather tomorrow, like like they plan to gather, and I'm talking about both sets of protesters, people that are going to come out will be inflamed emotionally. So the government has made the situation a very tense one. Now, when passions are high like that, and with the antecedents of our police, I would say, um, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't all go well for both democracy and for the safety of those who will go out tomorrow, which, is, which, which I believe is, was, the, was the agenda of those who have said that the protest should not hold. It is very easy. In fact, it, it, from a security perspective, it would have been ideal to have both set of protesters protesting tomorrow with, with security on ground to watch them and to prevent those who would have wanted to escalate matters into violence by simply just picking them up in the act. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's, it's just, I believe the government is not being sincere in its, in, its, in, in its reasons for saying the protest should not hold. For, from a security perspective, I believe that protest can hold and should hold as long as there are security persons on the ground to mop up any possible uh, outbreaks of, or, or pockets of violence. The okay. government has, has dropped the ball. All right. Well, we're being joined by the chairman of the Coalition of Odua Self-Determination Groups, um, Dayo Gunlana, uh, and he's going to be speaking for Defend Lagos. Uh, Mr. Dayo, it's good to have you join us. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, give us an idea as to what this Defend Lagos hashtag uh, means and why you decided to pick tomorrow, the same day where the lucky toll, um, um, the ancestors which has now metamorphosed into um, Occupy Lekki toll gate um, protesters are fixing their own protest. Why did you choose the same day? Uh, day is not that important. Uh, Mr. Gulana, can you hear me? Uh, I'm afraid I think we uh, we lost Mr. Gulana I there. Well, sorry, let's go back. Hello? To, yeah, yeah, yeah. We will have to get back to you because your network is breaking. But let's go back to the gentleman in the studio. Um, back to you, Barstein Nieberger. Um, Peter Ibridian has made an interesting point. He's saying that government is responsible for the tension um, that we're feeling from both sides of the divide and that he is of the opinion as a security person that these protests are supposed to be allowed to go on side by side and then security operatives being there would do their jobs. But unfortunately, there seems to be um, you know, a scare of sorts, and hence the police saying this protest should not hold. So where do we go from here? What do we do? Because tomorrow is just around the corner, and these young people are definitely determined to show up. So what happens now? What's wrong in having a counter-protest? That is the essence of democracy. If those who are disagree with the Occupy Lekito Gates protest wish to, take, to stage a counter protest under whatever name or guise, provided they are going to be peaceful, provided they are genuinely disagreeing with the Occupy Lekito Gate protesters, they should be allowed. I do not necessarily believe that they should be stopped. But I do strongly believe that these are not individuals who are motivated by any legitimate desire to ventilate their disagreement with the other protesters. My instinct tells me that these are sponsored elements, individuals who are funded by agents of states to give the police the army, a, an excuse to violate the rights of those who want to come out to protest. But let me make a point. The hypocrisy that I see in all this is the fact that while the Lagos state government pretends to be interested in unraveling what happened at the Togate on the 20th of October last year, proceeding that the judicial panel of inquiry, which I have participated, shows that there is no serious desire to arrive at the truth. The LCC, 
the Lekki Concession Company failed to hand over its servers, failed to allow forensic experts engaged by the tribunal, by the panel, to function effectively. The military that I speak to you, you know, has boycotted and pulled out of the proceedings at the panel. So the question is, is there really a commitment on the part of the state government to get at the truth? Well, that's a very good question. Apart from the, uh, the economic argument, what is the hurry with reopening of the two gates? Very good question. Now, let me go back to the chairman of the Coalition of Odua Self-Determination Groups, Dayo Gunlana, is back with us on the phone. Mr. Gunlana, I was asking a question earlier, obviously, because we were having issues with the connection. Um, why did you decide to pick the same day to have your protest alongside with the Occupy Lekki Toll uh, protesters? What was the idea behind that? I said it earlier, probably you didn't hear me. I said, well, it was, a, it was coincidental. We chose that for the and we chose that for the truth. You didn't, you have to say it too. What I'm saying to you, what I'm saying to you, the day that we chose, it's very good that we put that. What, what, what is important is what we are here. What we want to tell the world, we want to tell Nigeria. What the day is that it really matters. What we want to offer, why are we defending Lagos? That is what matters. Not the okay, day. so so you so, so, so you're day. telling me. Yeah, Mr. Dyer, hold on, hold on, hold on. The next two, three, four, five days. Hang on, you're telling us that the day doesn't matter. What matters is why you're defending Lagos. So why didn't you pick another day? Because you know that there is a protest that has been set for that same day, and you want to defend Lagos. Defending Lagos means that you are going to be protesting. Uh, opposite sides to the people who are asking for justice for the souls that were lost at the Lekito Plaza on October 20 of 2020. What is what are you defending Lagos from? I, uh, my sister, I'm saying I'm telling you this that we are not even doing Saturday alone. We are only starting from Saturday. Well, you have be a week protest. What are you defending we are Lagos from? We are not going to be a protest. We want the world to know that there are some people over there, there are some negotiators that are ready to defend Lagos. We will not allow Lagos to be destroyed. What and are you I, defending I, 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 I Lagos from? from? That the last time there was this protest, it was so bad that the economy went down. We will not allow, and uh, before it speak up, it was so bad. We will not allow anybody from anywhere again to start destroying Lagos. Lagos is anything. It's a commercial all about the Yoruba people. We will not allow it to go down with it. I'm yet to understand what you're defending Lagos from. You say you would not allow Lagos to be destroyed. By whom? Peaceful protesters? Hello? 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 And I am now telling you <laughs> that Lagos is our heritage, is the economic hub of the Yoruba. We will not allow people or anybody from anywhere to destroy our Lagos, to so, destroy our heritage, to so destroy the economy of Lagos. We will not allow it to go. This is very interesting. Are you telling me that this is a Yoruba protest because you're saying we, the Yorubas, will not allow Lagos? But Lagos is not occupied by only Yorubas. Lagos is more like a very cosmopolitan state where you have all kinds of people, all tribes, you know, in Lagos. So is this really a Yoruba versus the whole world or the whole Nigeria? I mean, you're confusing me. And I could hear Barista Inibere uh, laughing at this. Barista Inibere, what do you make of this? I know that um, I'm going to let Peter also wade in. Uh, but Barista Inibere, he's saying that they, they're trying to defend Lagos they will not allow Lagos to be um, destroyed. And he's saying, we, the Yorubas, I'm trying to understand what that means. Well, I don't mean to be demeaning, but the gentleman will be more useful, you know, in his advocacy if he devotes his talents to the Yoruba movie industry. I think this is just for purely for entertainment, the comment he has made. I do not understand what he's talking about. He keeps saying, Lagos is the commercial center of the Yoruba people. What, what is this gentleman talking about? This is the, 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 
the devilish and the destructive tactics of the ruling class. They want to use tribalism, they want to use racism to divide our country, to split Nigerians along ethnic lines. They want to paint the impression that non yorubas are the ones who are protesting, that non yorubas are the ones who are asking questions about the Lekki Togate. But that is our I participated in this protest, and I can, that is in the answers protest, and I can tell you authoritatively that the vast majority of those who pro-led who participated in that protest, they are Yoruba by tribe. But because this is our fourth line as a country, politicians continue you know, to indulge in this silly game of ethnic division, in this silly game of you know, tribalism. For somebody to reduce the conditional rights of Nigerians to a tribal or an ethnic matter, it is so unfortunate, it is so disingenuous, it is so regrettable and preposterous. We should not tolerate this kind of conversation. This is not what we should be talking about in 2021. The Lagos that is defending, that he wants to defend. Let him go. Why didn't they go to Obalende a few hours ago to go and defend Lagos from the hoodlums who were shooting guns and attacking people? When the Agboros, the NURTW people, when they are causing and wreaking violence on the state, why have these individuals not come out to defend Lagos? So this silly attempt to say that, oh, we want to defend Lagos from invaders, from people who are not Yorubas. They just bring this sentiment because they believe they can use that to sway people. But I believe the Lagosians will be wiser. I believe Nigerians are wiser. This is not a tribal argument. This is not a tribal protest. This is a protest that calls for justice. This is a demand for accountability. Okay. All I'm right. not surprised that okay. the young man, the gentleman could not say, what exactly is defending Lagos from? Well, I, I was hoping I, not I, was, I was hoping he would do that for me. But Peter, you did say that this is that you said that the government um, uh, handled this poorly, and they are the ones who are raising tension. But you also listened to the young, the gentleman, um, and what he had to say. I, and I'm still thinking to myself, what is does he mean by we will not allow Lagos to be destroyed? As a security person, do you understand where he's coming from? Is there any intel as to? Uh, a destruction that will happen tomorrow from peaceful protests? Well, there are, there are laws in place or there are um, attempts to make laws governing hate speech. And we, from what the gentleman was saying, um, there were certain elements of his statement that were bordering on hate speech or, or incitement to violence. Um, his, his state of mind, from what we've heard over the... Over the over this um, conversation is that of somebody who is looking to foment trouble. And if the security agencies are sincere to their responsibilities, then they should pick people like that up for, for, for questioning, or at least to determine what it is that they're trying to do. Um, the, the security agencies of this country have not relinquished, at least in Lagos State, they've not relinquished their duties or responsibilities to private citizens. And it is, it is, uh, it is sad to see the government saying protests should not hold, or answers or occupy like it, protests should not hold. But you have a group of people who are saying they will start their their, their agitation as it is from tomorrow to whenever they are ready to get off the streets. Um, it is clear, like I, like I said before, if the security agencies are sincere, the government is sincere. That entire like um, point. Is why football, football, football stadium. Yeah, you find fans of different of two teams converge in one spot to uh, to support their teams or to make their make, make their points known. Mm -hmm. And there are people on ground to make sure that it's done in an orderly manner. From the incident of the NSAS protests, especially those who were at Lekki Point last year in October, we saw that their their gatherings were peaceful and were largely peaceful. And it wasn't until there were attempts to intimidate them and, and um, call them into submission that there were some, in fact, even some people who hired bodyguards and brought dogs to the, to the lake site. These other sets of people who are coming to say they want to defend Lagos, I mean, the, the federal government should even weigh in at this point. Because if Lagos State is not ready to be governed properly, then the state of emergency is not out of place. Because the, from, the, from what we're hearing these actors or non-state actors saying, they are hitting on the policy. The security agency should look into this matter quickly to prevent it from escalating 
from the point where it is already. All right, back to you, Mr. Dio Gunlana. Um, although you still haven't told us why you want to defend Lagos, but let's look at the way forward. So you intend to continue to defend Lagos for at least a week, you, you stated. Um, do you feel that the people who are protesting for um, the Lekito, at the Lekito gate uh, pose a threat of sorts, and you think that this is why you are protecting Lagos from them? Uh, do you see that these people you called thugs that had looted um, after the protests that happened on October 2020, do you think that they are the ones who are going to be out there on the streets tomorrow, hence your desire or your choice to be also on the streets of Lagos. I mean, let's not also forget, I'd like to add, that this protest did not just happen in Lagos, they happened nationwide. So I'm not understanding why this is a hashtag to just defend Lagos, if you feel that Lagos was the only state that was looted. There were other people in other states that also you know, were part of the looting. So do you really have a case here, sir? Well, I didn't really well, but I need to tell you this. You have me, I didn't hear you well, but it's crazy for me to tell you this. The last time there was protest, the protest was thoroughly hijacked. So many buses were destroyed, and the consequences we could see. That when all staff and too many office workers were going out, they could not see any, any bus to enter. Truly true, I want to tell you too, so many schools were also burned. I don't know why protesters would burn schools, schools that house uh, testimonials of students, and so many other documents that are important. I All don't right. know why they have to Quickly, pay. quickly, let me just ask you I one question. You We're pay. out of time. We're out of time, clear. Mr. Gulana. One last question. I hope you can hear me. One last question. I would like to ask you, when the hoodlums were trying to hijack all the protests, whether it was in Abuja or in Lagos, where were our security agencies? Do you not think that your grievances should be taken up with the police force and our security agencies and not the protesters who were protesting peacefully? Quickly, can you answer that before we wrap this up? Well, you were asking me where were security agencies where protesters were burning all these uh, properties. Am I right? It was, I didn't say protesters. When these hoodlums hijacked or were trying to hijack the protest, where were our security agents? And I, I'm asking, do you not think that you have misplaced priorities? Uh, hello, 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 and your, hello, hello, and your I, grievances I, should be targeted at security the, agencies. Um, uh, the IG and the Commissioner of Police to answer. But from my whole point of view, it, uh, protest does not need to go to that extent. If if indeed they are genuine about protest, I am telling you the last protest was all my plan. Okay, Mr. Gunana, yeah, unfortunately we're I out of time. We're out of time. Uh, Mr. Gunana is of the Odua People's um, Coalition, and uh, he is for the Defend Lagos. I want to thank you. Nibeg Fiong is a lawyer, and um, I want to thank you. Peter Egbidian, he's a security consultant. Thank you all for being part of the conversation. Unfortunately, we run out of time. Thank you as well. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll take a short break, and when we return, Bochi State Governor Bala Mohammed has said Fulani herders are compelled to carry firearms in self-defense. Stay with us.